After a long, arduous wait, the U.S. men's national team finally played their first game in about a year on November 12th against Wales. It was a cold, rainy night, and we, for the first time in a year, got to see the new face of the USMNT and what it actually looks like and what we could be looking at going forward for the national team. Let's discuss what we saw. I'm recording the first part of this video after the first half. I figured it would make more sense to kind of split the video in half for first and second halves of the game. Um, just because I think it's valuable to, to, to get my thoughts out and see how the team actually changes from one half to the next. That being said, though, I actually don't think that we're going to see a lot of change from the first half to the next. This is going to kind of be reaction slash prediction for what we're going to see in the second half. Not that it really matters because um, this video is going to go out when the game's done anyway. But the reason why I don't think right now that I'm going to see a lot of change in the second half is because a lot of the issues that I saw in the first half just have to do with team chemistry and the team just really not being there, not being really solid early on. These are a lot of guys that haven't played together yet and they don't really have that connecting uh, that connecting line, especially in the final third. Weston McKinney was probably the best player on the field just in terms of getting the ball from the defensive third and, and shuttling up through midfield and putting it into attacking positions. He played long passes. He played great defensively. The guy has an absolutely unreal work rate. We've known that from the beginning. Um, and so... McKinney, I think, is is the key to controlling the midfield, which seems to be very much a focus of Burhalter right now. But without Christian Pulisic, who was pulled last minute because of injury, and, and obviously I hope he's okay, but without him, that kind of connecting factor in the final third just isn't there, and, and you really saw it. Where the team looked fantastic when they were playing in space, when they were playing in the midfield, they had space to, to keep the ball and run with it, and from the very beginning it looked like the team was very comfortable to hold most of the possession. But the question, as it has been for a few years now, is can they actually convert that into final third opportunities? And before, you know, even, even just two, three years ago, the answer to that was no because they didn't really have the talent to do it. Now they've got the talent. It's just a matter of can you can, can they actually coalesce? Can, can, can they really work together? Uh, Josh Sargent being pulled because of uh, coronavirus restrictions in uh, where he's at right now uh, because of travel restrictions. That hurts. I really wanted to see him. I think he could be more of that true number nine. Uh, right now it's it's uh, Sebastian Legette who's there who was a last minute call up from the Galaxy. And he's fine in, in the midfield. I think he's serviceable. But uh, is he going to be the long-term answer at the number nine? Certainly not, I wouldn't think. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see Tim Weah later on. Um, uh, Conrad De La Fuente, Conrad, as we will now call him. Um, let's see if he lives up to that single name. Uh, he certainly is a lot different. He's, he's a lot different than most other countries would put uh, out, on, out on the wing. I mean, he just looks a lot different. He's bigger. I mean, he looks like a midfielder. But he moves like a winger. And that, to me, is exactly what the U.S. is about. I don't know if the U.S. is going to be able to produce the, the technically sound players that a country like Brazil or England or Germany will be able to produce, but I think the U.S. can produce the best athletes in, uh, in the world of soccer. And Conrad certainly looks like he could be that, and he's not the only one. Uh, when when you look at a guy like Weston McKinney, who's really big, when you look at Yunus Musa, who's eligible for four different nations right now, and they talked about how he's like the five-star quarterback out of Texas. You know, everyone's everyone's looking for him. And I thought it was interesting because the commentary team brought up Weston McKinney again and saying, you know, talking about how he's bringing the USMNT onto the level of those teams, those other teams that Musa is eligible for, like Spain and like Ghana and places like that, where, where uh, McKinney said, look, he needs to be good enough to play here. And I think that's a really important mental shift just because we're looking at a new era of the United, of United States soccer guys playing overseas and trying to distance themselves from uh, missing that World Cup. And to say, look, here's this guy 
who is highly touted and highly recruited by some of the some of the best nations in the world normally the u.s would just be would be lucky to have a guy like that even step foot in the facility and now you got a, a team leader like weston mckinney who's out there saying look he needs to be good enough to play here you know and really elevating the stature of the team which which i really really like um so I think overall, offensively, the chemistry just isn't there. The team looked really fluid and, and honestly really good at times, moving the ball from the uh, from midfield and, and making attacking moves. They had a beautiful piece of play right at the end, uh, link up between McKinney and Serginho Dest, and they were able to get a good ball in to Leggett, who again, if that were Josh Sargent, if that were Tim Weah, if that were Christian Pulisic, would it get finished? I don't know, but but certainly there's going to be someone else there in the future. I don't think Leggett is going to be the number nine going forward. So I think it's a chemistry issue, and that's not going to get fixed in one halftime. It probably won't get fixed even by the 16th when the U.S. takes on Panama. Um, so I'm very open to being wrong. One more thing I want to mention, defense has been an issue for the U.S. in the past. Um, I think that going forward, the U.S. will have issue with creative players on the wing. We're seeing it with Ravi Matondo right now, um, who's a terrific player. And he is a very, very creative playmaker on the right wing. And he's been the only one that has really given the U.S. any any level of, uh, of fear moving forward. And I think a big part of that is because all of the fullbacks right now, from Robinson, Dest, Reggie Cannon, all of the fullbacks are attacking or are attack minded fullbacks, they're almost like wingbacks. And so they find themselves going forward a lot, and it exposes the center backs to wings moving centrally, which other than John Brooks, there isn't really a solid center back option right now. Maybe it will be Miazga going forward. You know, maybe it'll be someone like Cameron Carter Vickers if, if he, you know, gets back on track. You know, whoever it may be, uh, there isn't that solid option that can cover, that can move out and cover the wing right now. On the right, it's okay because Tyler Adams will move out playing the six. He'll move out and cover, which is why I think Serginho Dest was actually put at right back instead of his, his uh, left back that he's been playing for Barcelona because it is much easier for Tyler Adams is more comfortable to move over and cover that space if Dest moves forward which is exactly what we saw which is why Dest was very much involved in the build up uh, in build up and a lot of the attacks were coming from the right and Tyler Adams none of the counter attacks were coming from the right because Tyler Adams was there to cover I think it was great I think if you can find that same thing on the left I think that means that Christian Pulisic will probably be playing on the left wing and he's a guy with a high work rate so he'll track back try to cover when that fullback goes to overlap or if you slot in a different fullback and you say you know you slot in a fullback who is more of a defensive guy and you say we're going to be a little bit uh, asymmetric because our right our right back is going to be attacking and our left back is not uh, if you want to do that I think that's fine but something needs to be done about that issue on the right wing and it's very possible that in the second half Matondo will find a little bit more space and could uh, break the deadlock for Wales so we'll see what happens in the second half and uh, we'll take a little musical interlude and we'll be back talking about the second half all right second half just ends game ends uh nil nil is the final and uh you know the second half was kind of boring at places and a little reminiscent of some usmnt games that we've seen in the past you know the team uh, i don't know if this is a function of who they've played or a function of burhalter being the manager or you know just bad luck but the team tends to get into these kinds of games where you know from the 60th minute on a lot of the game is played right in the middle of the field and then in the 85th minute it starts to turn on a little bit um, and that's pretty much what we saw here uh, right at the tail end uh, Stu Holden said that he would give the first half performance a six he give the second half performance a five um, I would take both down by one. I would give the first half performance a five. I think it was average, uh, but you got to remember that Wales, at least on the back line, is playing with a lot of players that are not at the level of what we'd want the USMNT to be. And in the second half, they looked a little worse than that. Um, and I think I, I'm not. That's not necessarily a, a bad thing going forward. I think two days of camp players are coming in you know having played drastically different 
schedules, drastically different numbers of minutes, very little time to work together. So it was expected that the second half would be a little bit rougher, and it certainly was. Um, the U.S. got pretty sloppy with tackles at times, and that got frustrating. Uh, the back line as it is, is is not the strongest part of the team, as I mentioned in the first half. And the tackles did get very sloppy. Sebastian Legette was on for too long, in my opinion. Uh, he did not show me anything. And granted, he's not a number nine. He's not a striker. But uh, there needs to be somebody there very soon. And I think Tim Weah is the guy. Uh, Weah and and uh, Nicholas Giochini, Giochini, I think, sorry, uh, came in with 12 minutes left in the game. They replaced Gio Reyna and Giannis Musa. And both of them looked really good for what we saw. I mean, there wasn't a lot of attacking play to be had, but there was a point at the very end where Wales looked dangerous. Both men tracked all the way back into the corner and uh, and defended against uh, two Welsh players down there and actually got the ball back, which to me is impressive because that's, that's not something that you saw from U.S. forwards a lot. I mean, Josie Altador was not the kind of guy that was going to track all the way back and start playing defense uh, near the box. Both Wea and Giochini did that, and, uh, and so that was good to see. Uh, Wea, right at the very end, looked aggressive. He looked like he was in a good position. He looks bigger. You know, obviously, as he's getting older, he's getting a little bigger, which is good. So I think right now it's going to be either Wea or Sargent that is going to be the long-term number nine going forward. And obviously, with Sargent not on the team uh, right now, I think Wea should be starting striker in the U.S.'s game against Panama in four days. He showed me enough to think that it can't be legit. It's got to be someone who can actually play the position, and I think I think that person is going to be Wea. First subs made by Burhalter came in the in the 70th minute with uh, with uh, Lene and Johnny Cardoso, and whether or not that's Burhalter not realizing that a change needs to be made or you know in a friendly you never know what the manager might be thinking so maybe he's thinking i'm gonna leave this 11 out there and see how well they do see how long they can go playing at a high high pace like they were in the first half and they made it about 60 minutes and then he uh he let another 10 go and then made his first changes and then after that he he made four more um finally with cannon and and uh Otisoe, who is good i mean he i mean again this is that's a big dude he looks he looked really big and i think the us's advantage going forward can be size the us is big pretty much everywhere especially in the midfield and so otisoe again there's a lot that needs to be seen from him and he came on with four minutes left so there's you know basically nothing that you can say about his performance other than he's a big guy athletically he's intimidating and I think uh, going forward, that can definitely be something that the U.S. has to its advantage. You know, like I said in the first half, there's not going to be uh, the U.S. is not going to have the technical advantage or, uh, against a lot of these teams, but but they can have the size advantage. Guys like Otisoe, uh, Tim Weah, um, I mean Johnny Cardoso is pretty tall. Weston McKinney, you know, guys like that. Those are the kind of guys that give you the the physical advantage. Um, so uh, I was happy with that. Again, the tackling was very sloppy. Didn't love that. There wasn't a lot to love in the second half. There wasn't a lot to hate in the second half. Again, the the finishing in the final third was not great, but I really think that that's more a comment on the chemistry of the team rather than the ability of the team. So we'll get a real sense of that if it improves against Panama. It's not going to improve markedly, but you know, just forcing the goalkeeper into making a couple saves. I mean, uh, Lane had won where he forced Ward to make the best save of the night, or the second best save of the night, because uh, because uh, the U.S., uh, the, uh, Zach Steffen, couldn't come up with his name for a second. Zach Steffen had a great save. Um, and uh, so that was the best save of the night. Um, L- Lane made Ward make his best save of the night with a long-range shot curler into the bottom corner, and Ward had to go full extension for it. Uh, just a little bit more aggression is what I wanted to see. And I think if we see a little bit more of that against Panama, I think that'll really show you that it is the chemistry and it is the match fitness uh, rather than the actual ability. Now, if we see the exact same team against Panama, then I'm thinking, 
you know, maybe something needs to change. Maybe the manager needs to change. Maybe the formation needs to change. Maybe the combination of players needs to change. Or maybe it's just Christian Pulisic needs to be in there, and he's not right now. And it's hard. Uh, it's really hard to to say how much of an impact he would have made. I will say that he probably would have had a big impact on Anthony Robinson because Robinson looks really shaky for most of the time, and I think a lot of it had to do with how much he was in the attacking third. He wouldn't have had to be there that much had Pulisic been there. Um, he would have had a huge impact on Leggett, who had to do a lot more than he should have been asked to because he was in the number nine role, which is not something I really understand. I don't know why Tim Weah didn't start or uh, or Soto, who didn't even get in the game, or or, Gia, or Giacchini, or just somebody who can actually play that position because Leggett cl- clearly can't. But when Pulisic is in, certainly Leggett will not be, whether that means that Pulisic is playing the false nine or they move someone over. I don't really know, but uh, if if we see the same performance against Panama, I'll start to get a little bit concerned, but still holding out hope that maybe Pulisic in the team uh, will make a huge difference. But I expect to see at least a little bit more competency in the final third against Panama. These are two teams that are going to be uh, pretty equal. Panama and Wales, I mean, going to be pretty equal when it, t- when it comes to talent in the back. Um, and so I think uh, I want to see a little bit more creativity. I want to see a little bit more danger in the attacking third. Um, and that's really the one thing that I would expect to change. The defensive third for the U.S. is probably not going to change that much because the U.S. has had these problems in the defensive third for a number of years. So I don't think it's going to change overnight. I don't think it's going to change in four days. I think it just takes uh, it, it takes a better game plan and it takes one or two more center backs to really be developed overseas uh, to come back and, and provide some stability in the back four. Because right now, uh, right now, Zach Steffen looks pretty good, but the rest of the back four, other than Serginho Dest, does not. Now, for John Brooks, he's been hurt a lot, so there's that. Uh, so I'm not going to hold him fully responsible, but like Miazga pretty much disappeared other than the yellow card he got. Anthony Robinson got lost on the field for most of the time, so they needed, essentially, they needed Dest and they needed Brooks, and uh, they needed Tyler Adams to come back and help him out, and then they needed McKinney to come back and help him out, and that's not a recipe for long-term success, so... Um, overall this game I'd give the U.S. a 5 they looked average Um, they didn't look great and this isn't the best team that they're going to see but uh, again you got to offset that with they haven't had camp in 6 months they had 2 days of camp they haven't had a competitive or any kind of game in a year Um, everyone's on drastically different schedules you had last minute changes Pulisic is injured Sargent couldn't make it um, and so all of that means that what we saw, we didn't see a horrendous team. We saw, meh, we saw an eh team. I would expect, I would expect the performance to get a little better against Wales, certainly in the offensive third. And if it does, if we see any level of improvement, my rating will go way up just because that shows me that, that the guys are there. They're willing to work. Burhalter is doing a good job with the four days of, of training that they have before they face Panama. Um, so my rating will go way up if I see any level of improvement. But if uh, if you disagree with me about where this team is, if you're more optimistic, if you're more pessimistic about where this team stands right now, let me know. Let's pull it down into the comments. We've seen a lot of conversation on our last few videos, and so I really want that to continue, especially uh, about a topic like this that is so interesting to so many of us here. So I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.